Hello everyone and welcome to Split Second Season 3. This week we bring you some of our voted decks from our patrons. Elder is on Ink Moths, Yeva Draw Grow. David is piloting Curious Tree, Lyle Smasher and Kodama, a list by Hire and Dante MTG, who is a patron of the channel. Ball is trying out Haon's Destiny, Kenrith the Mad King, a Hermit Druid list. And Leite is on Seek Robots, Varol's Hulk. David is going first and he kept his first 7, with the Bayou and Bloodstained Mire for Lance, and the Mana Crypt for Ramp. Kinsense is a great pair for Vile Smasher, survival of the fittest to find the needed pieces to win on this creature combo centric deck, and Valakut Exploration provides value over time and it is also a possible outlet for infinite landfall. Vivian is a versatile card, allowing to play on a Drago strategy while still progressing the board to its combos. Bal also kept his first 7, with a Mana Confluence, Windswept Teeth and Volrath Stronghold that can help in case he decks himself and doesn't win on the spot, or under Rule of Law effects. Mystic Remora and Sylvan Library for card draw, Assassin's Trophy for removal and Noxus Revival can also help with his main druid plan. Late to unfortunately had to Mulligan down to 5, keeping a Bloodstain Mire and a Nurturing Pitland for lands, but with a Wishclaw Talisman to pivot his game plan. Olsar Shepherd for protection, and Karen Feeder is a sack outlet for his Hulk lines. He sent to the bottom Collective Brutality and Cabal Ritual. Lastly, Elder also kept his first 7 with 2 Forest and a Jewel Lotus, allowing him to get access to Yeva turn 1. Endurance and Noxious Revival are both great at stopping Bal or Leite on their Druid and Hulk plans respectively. Eternal Witness is great recursion and Argothian Elder combos off with a Shia, so he's set for the draw goal plan. Ready for this match? David starts the game with a Bloodstained Mire, cracking it for a Badlands, and then casts a Mana Crypt. He follows it with a Velakut Exploration, and the table is all reading what he does, figuring it's a good outlet for infinite landfall. He passes and while top decks a Chromox, but decides not to cast it, hoping to draw something else to pitch to it. He plays a Windswept Teeth and cracks it for a Tropical Island, casting his Mystic Remora before passing. Late plays a Bloodstained Mire and cracks it for a Bayou. He then casts an All Sorrow Shepherd and passes the turn. Elder starts his turn with Jeweled Lotus, triggering Remora and he can't pay. He plays a Forest and passes the turn, since he can bring Yeva at instant speed. David enters the crypt with the wrong foot, taking 3. He plays a Bayou, triggering Valakut Exploration and exiling a Burnt Offering, which actually helps him in his decision to cast Vile Smasher before passing, hoping to enchant it with King Sense a Zap. Because he didn't cast Burnt Offering, Valakut Exploration deals 1 damage to each of his opponents on his end step. Bal pays for his Remora and top decks yet another Mox, a Diamond one. He discards a Mana Confluence and then plays Volra's Stronghold. He now decides to cast his Chrome Mox and sadly imprints Assassin's Trophy. He then casts Grinson Zenith X equals 2 and tutors for an Hermit Druid to the battlefield, shuffling the Zenith back and passing. Late plays a Blooming Marsh and casts a Wishclaw Talisman, triggering Remora and being unable to pay. He then attacks Bal for one and on his end step Elder flashes in his commander, Yeva Nature's Herald. He gets to his turn and does what the deck is supposed to do, plays a forest and attacks Bal for 4 before passing. David gets to his turn and wins the crit roll this time. He plays a Verdant Catacombs, triggering Valakut Exploration and he reveals a Fury, which came right in time to denying Bal of a possible win. He evokes it, exiling an Orkish Lumberjack to it, triggering Vile Smasher and dealing 5 damage to late. Fury then enters and triggers and David divides the 4 damage between Hermit Druid and Alasara Shepherd, 2 at each one. Fury is sacrificed and then David cracks his Verdant Catacombs for a Taiga, triggering Valakut Exploration, which is showing his strength so far. He reveals and casts a Wishcloud Talisman in order not to lose access to it. Remora triggers and he can't pay. He then goes ahead with his main plan, casting Kin Sense on Vile Smasher, triggering Remora and being unable to pay once again. It resolves and he goes to combat, attacking late for 2, triggering Kin Sense and drawing a card, before ending his turn. Balan taps and lets the fish go. He plays a Badlands and then casts his commander, Kenrith, in order to have two reanimation options in case there is some sort of graveyard hate, suspecting some endurance on Elder's side. We're back at late and he unfortunately drew the third land in a row this match, an Ancient Tomb. He unsuspectedly activates Witchclaw Talisman, giving it to Elder, and tutoring for an opposition agent. In his end step, Elder flashes in an Arbor Elf and then goes to his turn. He ponders for a bit and then plays a Mikokoro, which is also another great piece to stop the Hermit deck. This mono green control deck is putting some work, despite the obliviousness from the table. He attacks late this time, has it just tutored and could have been an ad nauseum. He passes after that. David takes another 3 from the crypt. He plays an Ancient Tomb, triggering Valakut Exploration and revealing a Pyroblast, which could only serve as protection this turn. David then goes to combat to consider his options better. He attacks late and draws from the King Sense trigger. In his second main phase, he casts his commander, Kodama of East Tree. 
triggering Vial Smasher and dealing 6 damage to Elder, which in turn triggers Kin Sense to draw him another card. In response, however, he holds priority and casts a Vampiric Tutor to get to draw the tutored card. However, Late promptly responds with his Opposition Agent, and David is now tapped out so he can't even activate his Wish Claw Talisman in response. Late controls David while searching, looking at his hand, and since Late was unlucky to multi 5 and draw 3 lands in a row, he exiles a Wheel of Fortune from David. David then draws from the King's Sense, and Kodama finally resolves. He then goes to his end step, and since there was a card still exiled with Velikut Exploration, he deals 1 damage to each of his opponents. David's plans to get Kikijiki to combo with his Zealous Conscripts are now far in the horizon as he passes. Paul gets to his turn, and on his upkeep, he fires his Noxious Revival on his Hermit Druid. But in response, Elder casts his Endurance, with its evoke cost, to still have access to his Mikokoro. He exiles an Eternal Witness and then Endurance enters, it triggers and he targets Baal, so in response Maul activates his Kenrith to return the Hermit Druid back to play. Endurance trigger resolves and then Baal draws his card for the turn and he is forced to pass being tapped out. Lead starts his turn by asking Baal's hand size, and with 5 in hand he feels like postponing the will plan. He plays a Nurturing Pitland and considers his options before casting a Lesser Massacre, discarding a Wooded Foothills, too much confusion from the table, which is used to seeing it enter play through Hall Climbs, and not being cast. He then goes ahead and fires the Wheel of Fortune with one last card in hand. Elder responds to it with an Argothian Elder, low-key saying it's only ramp, and suddenly the fourth player win stats could see another win after this wheel. David then also responds with a Force of Vigor, pitching his Vivian and targeting Lesser Masticor and the Wish Claw, so that Masticor can start the loop because of already having a minus one minus one counter, and in case Opalifts play, there is one less tutor in play. Still in response to the wheel, Elder casts his Noxious Revival, targeting his Endurance to be put on top of his deck, preventing Ball from winning anytime soon. Everyone discards their hands and draws a new 7. Late is then forced to pass without fast mana. Elder is the one who found fast mana. He casts a Mox Diamond, discarding a Windswept Heath, and follows it with a Chrome Mox, imprinting a Turn Timber Symbiosis. He then goes into combat and attacks Late with his Yeva, who shams her with his Masticor, hoping that Kodama will not be attacking him anytime soon. On his second main phase, Elder plays a Dryad Arbor, because since it's a land, he cannot flash it in and passes the turn. David gets to his turn and once again loses the crit roll. He ponders Baal's options to win in his next turn are slim, due to two pieces of interaction from Elder. This way, he attacks late with everything, and it doesn't block, triggering King Sense to draw a card. With 9 cards in hand, David starts with a Yavimaya, Cradle of Growth, triggering Kodama and Valakut Exploration, resolving this one first and exiling a Snuff Out, which unfortunately to him, he can't deal with the Agent. With Kodama's trigger, he now puts a Forest into play, triggering Valakut Exploration once again and exiling an Emergence Zone. He then casts a Timur Sabertooth, triggering Vile Smasher and dealing 4 damage to Ball, which in turn triggers King Sense and draws him a card. The cat then enters and triggers Kodama, and he puts a Blood Crypt tapped into play, triggering Velakut Exploration once again, but exiling a useless Whirly Tutor. He then hard casts Snuff Out, in order to save 2 life, and targets Argothian Elder, since Elder only needs a Shia to generate infinite mana. In response, Elder adds 2 green with his forests and untaps them with Argothian to cast a Duskwatch Recruiter, and suddenly this showed to be quite a timely removal since Elder had an outlet for infinite mana at hand already. David then goes to his end step and his opponents take 2 from the unused cards from the Velikus exploration. He passes with 6 cards in hand. Ball starts his turn with a Dockside Extortionist, entering and creating 6 treasures. With Endurance and Mikakor available to Elder, going for an Hermit activation can be devastating, so he plays reactively with a Dothy Voidwalker, which would stop any attempts from late but in turn, David could turn his eyes towards him or Elder, so he passes with mana to pump his Kenrith if needed. Late simply plays a Twilight Mire and adds double green with it to cast a Burl Druid, followed by a Lanor Elves, in hopes to get enough jumpers to block a Raging Tree from David. He then casts an Imperial Seal in order to look at his options, since he's pretty much falling out of favor this match. He tutors for an Abrupt Decay out of better options to deal with Dothy, and the Seal is exiled to Dothy before he passes the turn. On his end step, however, Elder activates his Death Squad Recruiter and finds and reveals a Hyrax Tower Scout. He still activates it once again and finds an Elvish Mystic before going to his turn. He draws and casts a Sylvan Library, since he can't flash it in, and without great attacks, he passes the turn. The Vid script slaps him yet once again. He does some math and starts things off with a Culling Ritual, triggering Vile Smasher and dealing 4 damage to Elder which in turn triggers King Sense to draw a card, but in response to the draw, Ball fires a Lindol's Vault, and repeats its process 3 times, paying 3 life total. 
He then cracks his treasures for 4 mana and a random white mana in there for a possible needed top deck silence to stop the vid. Elder now responds as well and activates his Death Squatch Recruiter, finding a Wirewood Symbiote. The culling ritual resolves and the vid doesn't even bother to choose its colors, as he announces he wants to go to combat. So Bal straights away from his silence on top and activates Kenrith to put 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on him, worrying the game will last long and needing to block Kodama. The vid then turns all his creatures towards late, as an alternative way to remove the opposition agent, which prevented him from winning turns ago. In his second main phase, he fires a Dark Ritual and casts a Woodland Bellower, triggering Kodama and itself, and he tutors for a Tireless Provisioner to play, triggering Kodama once again. He puts a Marsh Flats into play, triggering the Provisioner and Valakut Exploration, exiling a Kikijiki, <laughs> a bit too late now. He gets a Treasure from the Provisioner and also triggering Kodama, with which he puts a Gruel Turf into play which triggers the Provisioner and itself, and he orders the triggers to resolve the bounce first so he can then take advantage from the Provisioner's trigger creating a treasure tree in Kodama, and therefore putting Gruel Turf into play once again. This way, he demonstrates a loop where he puts Gruel Turf into play from the Kodama trigger, returning itself to his hand and creating a treasure from the Provisioner that triggers Kodama once again, allowing him to put the bounce land into play once again. This way, he could generate infinite treasures and trigger landfall infinitely, which could exile his entire deck with Valakut Exploration, and then he wins with Thassa's Oracle. I'm just kidding. He has other outlets, of course, but he simply repeats his process around 40 times, enough to go to his end step and kill the table with Valakut Exploration's trigger. GG. Thank you for joining us for today's match, everyone. Despite the early Hermit Druid on the field, Valakut Exploration showed its potential by its semi card advantage it gave the vid every turn, sometimes getting access to 4 cards per turn. Yeva also showed that Monogreen can have good responses to Thassa's Oracle decks and other shenanigans, and Late was mostly out of the game from its mulligan to 5, which allowed the vid to win easily through sheer card advantage and his niche combo. We'd like to start the credits by thanking our current patrons, and especially Izanagi, TJ Rap, Mike Purr, Ajimo, Dragon Housecat, V, RJ, Hitachil, Pina, Ricardo, Dragon Steak, Katarina, Michael Bowen, Super Scaldi, and Dog, our latest sack breaker. If you want to support us, you can do so by liking this video, subscribing, or by becoming a patron yourself. If you want to go through other Commander adventures, click one of the videos on the right. If you want to talk with us about our games or other EDH related matters, join us on Discord. Join us again next week for a new set of commanders and more decisive plays. See you all then!